Hey guys, it's Tommy here from Sales Lucky, and today's video is about how to use spin selling effectively, okay? So, you guys have might, might have heard the term spin selling. I'll break it down real quick. Spin selling basically stands for, S stands for situation questions, P stands for problem questions, I stands for implication questions, and N stands for needs payoff questions, okay? So uh, just a quick explanation, situation questions or any questions that kind of allow you to understand better, well, basically the facts of a situation, you know, what's actually happening, um, the, you know, the practical aspects of a given situation allows you to understand um, that aspect. So problem questions are questions that help elicit pain points, challenges, or obstacles that your prospect is facing and they're basically meant to draw out pain okay they're meant to uh, draw out pain and identify problems that your prospect is facing implication questions I these are some of the most powerful questions along with needs payoff um, questions that you could possibly ask and implication questions basically allow you to better understand the impacts of a particular problem okay I'll give you an example let's say for example that uh, your prospect is experiencing a situation where uh, half his team is laid off and only have, he only has half his staff members and if he doesn't do anything about it well what are the effects of that well they could lose revenue, they could lose uh, customers to competitors, um, you know, they could um, not be able to grow, uh, they could, um, there's a whole lot of different things that could happen from that given situation, right? And implication questions draw out the impact of a particular problem and it's meant to expand its severity into um, you know, what it could potentially be. So it's those these types of questions are really meant to expand pain and oftentimes can be some of the most difficult questions to ask. Now, why is that? The reason is because, you know, Anil Rackham, the, the, the guy who wrote Spin Selling and Huthway, they basically found out that average reps would ask a bunch of situation questions and the reason was because these questions are easy to ask you know there's no pressure or no tension involved in asking these types of questions I mean if you can imagine asking like how big is your team or um, you know what projects are you guys working on these questions don't provide the prospect value they only give the seller more information and studies have shown that if you ask too many of these questions the prospect will just get turned off so you don't have, and, and so Huthway, the company that, you know, um, Neil Rackham founded, he found out that top reps only ask a handful of situation questions at most because especially these days, you can find a lot of that stuff on Google just by doing research. So um, Huthway also found out that top reps would ask problem questions way more. They asked problem questions way more often, thereby discovering challenges and problems that these prospects were facing, right? So, um, you know, the company found out also that average reps basically asked no implication questions and no needs payoff questions, which I'll get here into in a moment. And... Um, and top reps would consistently ask implication questions and needs payoff questions. So again, implication questions are meant to understand the impacts of a problem and how if you don't do anything about this problem, how it'll affect you know everything else. Needs payoff questions basically allow your customer or prospect to explain to you the benefits of your product or what they're looking for. Basically. If you, uh, a needs payoff question could be like, hey, Mr. Customer, now that you've seen our product, you know, what do you think? How, how, how do you think it might benefit you? Or how do you think 
you, um, you know, how do you think this might be helpful for you or your business and getting them to explain to you how they think your product is helpful. Because as we all know, if you tell your prospect something, you know, they might argue with it. But if they tell you something, they're not going to argue with that. So that's spin selling in a nutshell. And to explain how um, to, to use spin selling effectively, there's really two concepts. One is, as Bruce Lee said, you know, be like water, my friend. What does he mean? He means in martial arts, you got to stay nimble, you got to stay fluid, and you got to stay adaptable. If you're, if in, in a, he's saying in a street fight or in a real fight, if you've only got like two moves that you're accustomed to doing, you're going to be screwed. Um, so, you know, he's saying, be like water, my friend, you know, um, you know, water can crash, water can flow, um, water can, you know, break things and water can uh, adapt to a, you know, if you pour water in a glass, it becomes the glass, it can adapt. So, um, in the same way, using spin selling, one problem that I see or challenge that I see newer sales reps get into is that they try to use spin selling in a very rigid order. Like they feel like they have to use S and then P and then I and then N. And it's just not like that because they're more tools in a, in, in kind of, you know, it sounds kind of cheesy, but tools in a tool belt where you can use whatever question you need in a given moment. You can stay adaptable. You can stay fluid. The second concept is um, is also just as important, if not more important, and it's the idea of trust. So when I sold into procurement um, for four years, this was the challenge that we had when we tried to use spin selling questions. Was that procurement because they dealt with salespeople every like all day long, every day all the time, you know, they didn't oftentimes didn't trust salespeople because I'm sure as you can imagine, they might run into, you know, a couple experiences where the salespeople didn't have their, you know, their customer's best interest in mind. So they didn't trust as easily and they, they didn't um, open up as much when you would ask them these questions. So that's something that I learned was that it's incredibly important to have a foundation of trust when you ask these questions, okay? So I hope you guys got value out of this video. You know, read the blog post here as well uh, in the link. And um, please share this with a friend if you found this valuable. I'll see you guys soon.